Erev Tov, I'm Stephen Benun with Israeli News Live. And Putin has emerged out, as we have seen by the media reports there. He is, of course, not sick, in very good health. And as he said, uh, makes for great rumors, make for, for great gossip. Uh, all the different ones that were about him while he had disappeared for the last 11 days. And there's been very little about what his disappearance has been about. But we do believe at Israeli News Live that we have been dead on target in regards to the threat of nuclear war and the events that are surrounding uh, Ukraine and even Crimea as events are unfolding and we see more and more of the evidence that is quite clear. The, the supposed uh, uh, deal that has been repeached with the Eastern Ukraines with the, uh, with the Republic there, that uh, the self-proclaimed public in East Ukraine it, it is not unfolding quite the way as planned. And President Putin is very determined not to allow the Russian population, either in Crimea or Eastern Ukraine, to be dominated nor dictated by the West, especially the United States, as he has made it quite clear. In an article on the Moscow Times, it says Putin's rattling of the nuclear saber makes it clear Ukraine is non-negotiable. I wanted to bring this article to your attention because I think it's very serious and I think that even the United States President Barack Obama should be taking very serious as well the danger that he is putting the United States in and drawing them into a nuclear combat, a nuclear war that I'm sure that most Americans would rather not get involved in, especially over a country such as Ukraine. Now there are no doubt there are Ukrainians that want to be democratic and want to be part of the EU or they wouldn't be fighting for it in the first place. But it's also obvious that the Pope of Rome has been the one to push the buttons to take Ukraine. And what the intentions are is not quite clear as of yet. But they put a Catholic pre uh, Prime Minister in there to, uh, and forced out the Russian uh, President by gunpoint. So can you really blame Vladimir Putin for the actions that he is taking? I have to look at it more objectively. I'm not saying that I'm for Russia, nor am I for America in this case, but I am for the fact that the country seemed to be doing just fine, besides probably all the turmoil in the background in the country, but as far as now, it's in a turmoil, sure enough, with the different uh, fighting that is going on, and it's only going to escalate more. The United States is sending in military equipment and hardware, as well as 11 other nations have agreed to send lethal weapons to Ukraine to fight this battle, and even soldiers are being brought in, and intensive training is being done. So it seems to me that Putin, in his disappearance, was disappeared for a reason, and it may be for the combat readiness of his country, a war that he would rather not see and a war he would rather not engage in. But nonetheless, as he put it, he will not let the Russian citizens of Crimea or eastern Ukraine be bullied around by the different ones of the coalition fighting that is going on with NATO pushing back his people in eastern Ukraine. Let me read this article here. The revelation Sunday that President Vladimir Putin had been prepared to bring Russian nuclear weapons into state of alert last year amid soaring tensions over the Crimean Peninsula makes one thing clear. Analysts told the Moscow Times Russia won't give up on Ukraine even if it's faced with the threat of nuclear war. Asked about Russia's nuclear preparedness, Putin told state television ch channel Rossi 1 that concerns of potential Western intervention into Crimea last year forced him and his top security uh, officials to consider putting Russian nuclear arsenals on combat alert. We were ready to do this. I spoke to my colleagues and told them that Crimea is our historic territory. Russians live there. Spoke to my, uh, and <clears throat> they were in danger. We couldn't abandon them, Putin said in an interview filmed for a documentary, documentary produced to, to celebrate the one-year anniversary of Crimea annexation. He went on to explain the ultimate decision not to make the bold step despite all the difficulties and the drama surrounding the situation, the Cold War is over, and we did not need international crisis like the Bay of Pigs, Putin said. Moreover, the circumstances did not call for such action which would have been contrary to our own interest. According to uh, Andrea Bourbon, 
the head of the Central Command Headquarters of Russia's Strategic Missile Forces, said in comments to radio station Russian News Service on March 1st that Russia, Russia's nuclear forces are on constant combat alert. That's March 1st of this year, 2015. Uh, in peacetime, uh, he went on to say, our primary uh, strategic task is deterrence, but if the need arises to make a nuclear missile strike, we will fulfill this task in a fixed time. We are absolutely certain, Bourbon said. In accordance with the country's 2014 military doctrine, Re Russia reserves the right to use its nuclear weapons in response to the use of nuclear weapons or other weapons of mass destruction against Russia or its allies. And also, when the very existence of the Russian state is put at risk due to aggression with the use of conventional weapons. That's one that really caught my attention there, that Russia is willing to use nuclear force even when its enemy is using conventional weapons. If it feels threatened, the country is threatened, they will use nuclear force. A year ago, as the Crimean crisis sputtered to a boiling point, Dmitry Kislov, head of the state-run news agency Russia uh, Sigdonia and host of a popular weekly news show on R Russia One, boasted during a broadcast, Russia is the only country in the world that is realistically capable of turning the United States into a radioactive ash. As he spoke the words, an image of a massive mushroom cloud loomed in the background. His program that evening was a uh, apti titled, Putin Can Destroy NATO with a Single Phone Call. Uh, Kislov, who at that point had already become a household name for the liberal uh, deployment of controversial and inflammatory remarks, particularly against the West and the international LGBT community, has since been placed on the European Union's sanction list. A political message, according to Vladimir Dvorkin, and a, dis a distinguished military fellow with the Carnegie Moscow Center's nonproliferation program, Putin's statements on nuclear preparedness during Sunday's program lacked military sense and were thus purely political. I don't understand this statement for the simple reason, he says, that strategic nuclear forces are always on high combat alert, or at least the land-based missiles and ballistic missiles submarines are Dvorkin. A retired Russian Army Major General told the Moscow Times in a phone interview, the concept of mutual assured destruction is constantly at work, so there is no real need to bring it up. All these statements are political. They don't carry any strate strategic military meaning, he said. In that case, what political signal was P Putin hoping to send? It's quite clear that his political signal is that he's not going to play games. And... Who only knows to say what's going to happen? I know they're talking about sending United Nations forces into Ukraine. Uh, at this particular point, Putin's not in agreement with that whatsoever, and it seems to be violating the agreement that they signed in Minsk on February the 12th uh, for self-autonomy. So it, we're watching to see what happens because it could cause a huge problem in Europe. Uh, in fact, Vladimir Putin has also stated that in another news article there that uh, it, would, it would bring the stability of Europe, military stability of Europe, to a great risk if they were to begin to arm uh, the, the, uh, Kiev with lethal weapons. And that seems to be in the mix no matter what. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live.